Hi everyone, I'm Joe Sosa. Thanks for joining me today. Today I've been thinking about a stack of games that I bought recently. But what makes this stack of games quote unquote special for me personally is the fact that I believe they're going to be the last set of uh, last generation games. Now, before I continue and I say last generation, I'm completely aware that our current generation is PS5, Xbox Series X, and the Nintendo Switch. So these are not PS4 games, I'm actually talking about PS3 games, so I shouldn't even be saying last generation, it's two generations ago by this point. Um, but I'm just going to say last generation, or maybe I, instead of saying last generation, I'm just going to say previous generation, because I do have one Nintendo Switch game I'm going to show, and also two DS games as well. Um, so, uh, it's a bit of an eclectic group of games, and also a couple PS4 games, that's going to be the last ones that I show, because the, the ones that I want to focus on are the PS3 and the DS games. Um, because again, I don't think I'm going to buy any more PS3 games, or any Xbox 360 games, or any more DS games as well, so, yes, that's why I'm making this video. So let's go ahead and begin with... Splinter Cell Blacklist. Oh, by the way, before I continue, um, I didn't get these quite recently. These are a group of games that I got throughout um, March. And um, in fact, the DS games I actually got either at the tail end of March or at the very beginning of April. So again, I, um, this is not a collection or a haul that I got uh, recently. Uh, it, it, they were collected during the month of March and a little bit at the beginning of April as well. So again, let's go ahead and begin. So Splinter Cell Blacklist. So the reason why I got this game was actually because I was playing um, co-op Dead Space 3 uh, with a friend of mine recently. We started talking about Splinter Cell. And actually, although I haven't played or beaten any of the Metal Gear Solid games, or let me rephrase that, although I haven't beaten any of the Metal Gear Solid games, I have played them. Actually, no, that's incorrect. I have beaten the first one, excuse me. <laughs> that was fairly recently, about six years ago, give or take, so that's probably why I didn't recall that. Uh, so I have beaten the first Metal Gear Solid on PS1. It was for my PS3. I have I have started the second one, um, but I've not yet beaten it. And I've also have started um, the fourth one, but I've not yet beaten it. Um, Despite me not beating these games, I do enjoy the gameplay. Sometimes I am in the mood for something that's a little bit more stealth-oriented, not really action-packed. Um, and when I started talking about Splinter Cell, it reminded me that's a game series that I wanted to get, uh, that I wanted to look into. And so because of that, actually I probably should have started first with Splinter Cell, uh, the trilogy. As you guys can see, I believe this is the Canadian version. It has the English and then French after that, but it is ESRB, which means that it will play on any PlayStation. Well, in fact, PlayStation 3 is region free anyway, so that wouldn't matter. Uh, but again, uh, the company is ESRB, not Peggy, right? <laughs> um, so the reason, so I got this, and since I got the trilogy, I thought to myself, well, we, if I end up enjoying the trilogy, I'm more than likely going to want to get the, uh, the uh, a more modern iteration of the, uh, 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 the more modern iteration uh, of the series for Splinter Cell, right? Pardon me, I don't know why I stumbled on my words over that portion, over that little bit. Um, am I going to get the other? I do know, I am aware that there's other PS3 games, uh, there's other Splinter Cell games on PS3. So really quickly, think about me. <laughs> if there's no trophies, um, then I don't get them for my PS3. I'll get them digitally, digitally if possible for my 360. When it comes to my game collecting, I much prefer to collect uh, Blu-ray discs over DVDs and cartridges, just cause especially the cartridges, the save does not save on the SD card, but rather on the cartridge itself, the cartridge. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, but when it comes to digital games, I know one, one might be thinking, but you don't actually own those digital titles. At least with Xbox, um, it's much more easier and accessible to play digital games on your 360, Xbox One, or Series X. And it wouldn't surprise me if the next iteration of the X Microsoft console, if there is going to be one, if once again they really focus on that digital aspect and those, these games are allowed to be played uh, no matter on which console one has, as long as they're allowed to be played on it, right? For example, even though there are some digital 360 games like Spyro, um, the one, the one with Elijah Wood, uh, you can't play that on modern consoles on the Xbox Series X. So, I will be getting those other Splinter Cell games on my 360, or pardon me, my Xbox One slash 360. I don't own a Series X yet, um, but I will eventually. Um, so yeah, so that's why I got these two games. Let me just go ahead and put these aside. The next one I got was Kane and Lynch 2 Dog Day. So I got this one because again, the friend I was playing with, um, we were playing Dead Space 3 and they mentioned this game. And it was always a title that I wanted to pick up. And once I had an excuse to pick it up, I went ahead and do so. When it comes to me, I really focus on single player stories or, or narration in general. If it doesn't have, if the story's not all there, I really do question if I do want it. And I look into other aspects, uh, like for example, with, um, let me look it up really quickly, but I believe it's called 
eat lead. Eat lead, the return of Matt Hazard. I've heard that it's a whatever game, the story's not all there. But the reason why I own it is for the fact that an actor is actually voice acting for the protagonist. Um, I'm looking up the actor. Give me a quick second. Will Arnett. Oh my goodness, and Neil Patrick Harris voices his nemesis. I was unaware about that part. <laughs> Well, that's really cool. Well, see, that I'm a big fan of that uh, little video game trivia where um, it's just unexpected, but yet it's been created, and I want to experience that for myself. So that's why, again, I, why I do own uh, Eat Lead, uh, The Return of Matt Hazard, although it may not have gotten the best of reviews. The fact that what makes it unique is two actors uh, voice acting for this game. I think that's pretty cool. Another simple example of this would be Brutal Legend. Uh, with, of course, Jack Black portraying the protagonist for that. But anywho, um, so yeah, I, I've always wanted to check this game out, but I couldn't justify it. But now that I have an excuse for the co-op, um, that's pretty awesome. And I just found out as well that if anyone's interested, you can play on co-op online and also via split screen. So that's pretty cool. Uh, well, click disclaimer. Um, I looked it up online. I do believe one can still play over the servers. We have yet to have tried it. It's on open. When, after we beat Dead Space 3, we're going to move on to this game. Uh, but even if we can't play online over PSN, again, there is split screen, so that's pretty cool. Yep, there is split screen, just double checking. Moving on, so I got Shadows of the Damned, a pseudo 51 chip. I got really lucky with this game. This one's typically really expensive, uh, but I got it for a pretty good deal, brand new, just for the fact that the flap on the top is open, but the game itself is, it looks completely to be fine. I will be opening it to play it, but I'm not. I don't have any plans to play it currently right now, hence why it's stew in its plastic wrap or its shrink wrap. But uh, I never thought I'll be getting this game just because I'm not a big fan of spending um, $100 on, on games, especially brand new. Or rather, let me rephrase that. I never thought I'd be getting this game brand new because uh, I don't like to pay over, I don't like to pay over $100 for uh, games. Um, so I'm really happy with this purchase. I'm looking forward to checking it out. Um, in case you guys are not aware about Tudor 51, he's an individual who creates peculiar titles and uh, what's pretty cool about this one even though it's Japanese made the protagonist is Latino so if one is looking for representation uh, that's a pretty cool uh, uh, that's a pretty cool um, way to look at representation uh, a person of color being discussed by other non nine white individuals or Japanese creators uh, another example of, of Japanese creators working with people of color in their games is Evil Within 2, Sebastian Castellanos. I really do enjoy the Evil Within 2, and I really did enjoy Sebastian Castellanos' uh, character as well. So any time I could mention uh, that game and him, I'll go ahead and do so. The next game I got was No More Heroes, Heroes Paradise. So I do believe this is also by Pseudo51. Actually, since I have my computer right here, let me just quickly look that up. I don't like to give misinformation. Yep, so it is Suda51. Um, so I got this just because since I got Shadows of the Damned, uh, I know myself and I know I'm going to want to check out the other games. And I, I do know it's available on the Switch, but um, I am a quote-unquote Sony pony. <laughs> I do consider myself to be an attempt drone and Xbox as well. And PC Master Race, uh, PC Master Race, excuse me, <laughs> PC Master Race. Um, but I do primarily focus my gaming on PlayStation, on Sony's PlayStation. Um, so yeah, so that's why I decided to pick this up on my PS3 and also I am aware that for the PS4 the third game No More Heroes 3 is out for that. So Yes, the next one I got was Killzone Trilogy. So when it comes to my PS3 Although I don't mind owning things digitally for my for my 360 and my Xbox one when it comes to my PlayStation I'm just really worried. So <laughs> I don't need to fear monger but in case anyone's unaware there's a chip I believe it's called a CRM chip where when that chip malfunctions or ceases to work anymore uh, it won't be able to connect online and thus supposedly your ps3 won't be able to access any digital titles anymore thankfully most of my ps3 collection is physical um, there's only a handful of games that I own digitally for it and I only own it digitally because there's no physical version of it um, so I do own Killzone 2 and 3 already but the reason why I picked this one up was for the first Killzone because uh, the only way to own that physically is through the trilogy uh, this has two discs, the first one being Killzone for the PS. Oh, uh, it was originally for the PS2, but 
made up. And it was it's not a remaster, but it's just ported over to the PS3 and the disc two contains Killzone two and Killzone three. Um, so again, I just got this for the physical aspect for Killzone one. The next game I picked up was 3D Dot Game Heroes. So this one I did pick up used because it's just like with Shadows of the Damned. It's one of those games where brand new one is going to pay uh, quite a, a lot. Um, but I was quite happy with this purchase as well. It looks brand new. I would say that the condition is like new, um, but I got it for a great price. I'm really happy about this. The reason why it took me so long to pick this game up is just because uh, um, I've never really played Legend of Zelda. I have been Minish Cap and Elite uh, Between Worlds on, this, on my Game Boy Advance way back when. Um, but besides that, I have played Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, but I've never beaten, I've never finished those games. Um, but for my 3DS, during the, the, during the 3DS, 2DS closure, I made the choice to go ahead and pick up a lot of digital uh, Zelda games, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask. And I am aware that this game is heavily inspired by the classic Zelda games, so I figured, well, what if I become a huge Zelda fan and I really want to check this out, uh, a game that's inspired by The Legend of Zelda, more specifically the first one on the NES. So yeah, I'm happy that I have this in my collection. I am a fan of Atlas as well. Um, so it's really great to have 3 Dot Game Heroes. Um, yeah, anywho, sorry, I was just thinking. So those are the uh, the previous generation games that I picked up for my PS3. The only other PS3 game that I'm thinking about getting is Catherine. The reason why I haven't picked it up yet is just because of the genre. I typically do not play puzzle games. And because of that, that's why I'm a little bit apprehensive about picking it up. Also, I am aware of the difficulty. Uh, supposedly, Catherine, for the PS3 and 360, is, it's a lot more difficult um, compared to the PS4 and Xbox One. I believe it's also available for the Switch, too. Pardon me, quick context. If you're unaware, Catherine was uh, re-released for the modern generation consoles with extra content. Um, but yeah, so I haven't picked it up for my PS3 just because, again, I'm unsure if I want to play um, a puzzle game. And... Um, and yeah, typically when it comes to games that were ported over to the, to the PS4, I prefer to pick up the PS3 version um, and then pick up the PS4 version when it's much more cheaper. Um, but if I do end up picking up Catherine, that will for sure be the last uh, previous generation console game I'll be picking up. Um, but at this point, again, I'm not completely sure if I do want to own it. Just because if I do own it, am I actually going to play it? The reason why I'm interested in Catherine is just because I've heard that the story is intriguing. And again, I am a big fan of um, single player stories, a big fan of narration. So that's why I'm willing to check it out. Um, but again, why actually play it? I'm not sure. So I do have to do more. I've already done a lot of research, but I had to continue doing my research and just really sit down and ask myself, do I want to own this game? Do I want to, more importantly, play this game? Anywho, uh, so that's for the PS3 though. So let's move on to my Switch. Uh, so it's, even though it's only one, I did get the uh, Super, a new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. It's a game that I've been wanting to pick up for a while. It was on sale for a pretty good price, so I finally decided to do so. Um, this is a bit of an odd box. I am aware that the Switch is technically part of the PS5 and Xbox Series X generation, um, but that will be dependent on who you ask, right? Other people will say, well, the Switch is from the PS4, Xbox One generation, but yes. And then lastly, uh, well, not lastly, excuse me, but the other previous generation, that I picked up, but for handheld, not for console, are Pokemon games. So again, this was inspired by the 2DS closure shop, the 2DS slash 3DS eShop closure, excuse me, <laughs> that came out weird. Um, I did purchase the, I already owned the Pokemon games, but I made the choice to get the other version I didn't own. And um, I don't own any of the Pokemon games for the Switch just because I've heard how they're not, um, they're just not the same, they're a lot easier. Um, people were are unimpressed for console games. Uh, there wasn't that drastic difference in the same way that there was for Fire Emblem and there was for Legend of Zelda and Mario with Super Mario Odyssey. So I'm really just focusing on Pokemon handheld and I'm not going to lie, I'm more of a Digimon fan when it comes to narration. And even with video games, um, I've heard that Cyber Sleuth and Hacker's Memory has some pretty, uh, the, the story gets pretty intriguing. But with that being said, I do enjoy Pokemon games sometimes and uh, I don't, I don't want to make that regret where in the future I want to possibly go back and play a Pokemon game but I don't own them because I made the choice to not purchase them. So that's why I decided to get them digitally during the 2DS, 3D, 2DS, 3DS eShop closure. And then what, what finally made me pick up these two is just because I am aware that they're focused on narration. They did, it was Poke Game Freak's first attempt in actually producing a sequel uh, and continuing a story. So without further ado, you guys are probably aware of what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Pokemon White and Pokemon Black version 2. 
I will not be getting the alternate version just because, again, I'm not the biggest Pokemon fan, and I just wanted to experience Pokemon uh, for myself. Or more specifically, I wanted to experience the story told in the Unova, in the Unova region for myself rather than uh, secondhand. Uh, the difference between this and Catherine is that with Catherine, I will be unsure if I want to, if I want to do the gameplay. Uh, when it comes to Pokemon, though, I have no qualms in training and raising my Pokemon. In fact, one aspect I don't like about the newer Pokemon games, I do th believe the Switch does this as well, but on the, uh, on, this started with Pokemon XY, Sun, Moon, and then Ocho, Mon, Ocho, Ocho Moon and Ocho Sun. <laughs> um, the experience share, back then the older Pokemon games, experience share only worked with one other Pokemon, and that experience was cut in half. So the Pokemon that fought would get half the points, and the Pokemon that's uh, holding experience share would get the other half. But with the newer games, I believe that's still true. The other Pokemon get half, but the whole team gets experience points now, uh, which means uh, which makes which makes training Pokemon a little bit less personal, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, so that's why I decided to go back and pick up these two before they got even more expensive in the future. I'm not gonna lie, they were a little bit more expensive than I would like to have paid for a video game, but uh, better now than in the future is how I feel. And one aspect I don't like about this case is that it does have, it's not punctured, but there's like little debt marks on the on the front of the case. I don't know if one could see that. Um, but essentially what I've discovered when it comes to DS games is that either the cases are immaculate or the cartridges are immaculate. Very rarely can one have both. <laughs> and that's especially true the further back the game has released, so. Uh, the game case is not up to par as I would typically like it. The cartridge, thankfully, for both of these games, they're thankfully um, A-OK. -okay. And they are real, by the way, in case anyone is curious, when it comes to Black, White, Black 2, White 2, and Platinum. Oh, not, pardon me, not Platinum. Soul Silver and Heart Gold. One of the easiest, way, one of the easiest ways to determine if it's an authentic cartridge. So hold it, up, hold it up against the light. Now the light seeps through, the cartridge glows red. Uh, the likelihood of it being authentic is much more higher. And there's also double checking on the front. Of the game cartridge looking at the four letters and then comparing it to the back of the cartridge and making sure that what's uh, under the patent pending those four letters are identical and then of course looking at the pins and so forth right be essentially i'm just sharing this uh, as a cautionary uh, be careful when it's planning to buy ds games uh, just make sure especially popular ds games make sure that they are authentic with that being said just like with catherine i'm not so i do feel i do feel pretty confident in that i will not be getting any more ps3 games Catherine with hope, Catherine with standing. Same thing with DS games. Again, I'm not a big fan of the game saving onto the cartridge. I'll make special exceptions like for the Pokemon series and for Fire Emblem because I'm a huge Fire Emblem fan. Uh, but all in all, I'm not a big fan of that. There is one more game I possibly might pick up, but again, because of the price and also because of the fact how it saves, I may not be picking it up. Uh, but Infinite Space, that's a uh, SRPG that came out, a sci-fi SRPG. That came out for the Nintendo DS. Um, but yeah, so those are the previous generation games that I picked up. Now, the last, so truly verbatim, previous generation, last generation, so this is for the PS4 and Xbox One uh, phase. Uh, the last two that I picked up, I'm just including because why not, I got them at the same time, uh, was the Crisis Remastered Trilogy. Uh, I've always wanted to play the Crisis series. I do own two and three for my PS3, um, but the last time I tried playing it was... When it first came out all those years ago so i haven't tried since then and the trilogy obviously has as the name implies the first crisis as well so that's pretty cool i believe it's the first time crisis the first one has been available on the console series and the other game that i picked up for or, oh excuse me this is last generation and this is actually current generation for my ps5 uh, tales of arise and um i picked this up because i do own all the tales games for my ps3 and for my PS4 as well. And I've heard great things about Tales of Arise. I'm looking forward to checking this out. Unfortunately, it's doing a street grab because it is a JRPG. I'm in the middle of playing other games currently. So I probably won't be able to play this for a little while. But again, when I do finally do crack it open, yeah, I'm sure I'm going to enjoy it. So those are all the recent games uh, that I recently picked up. And more specifically, I wanted to focus on the PS3 and the DS games. I probably will be making videos like this in the future. Um, I do pick up games still for my Xbox and my um, Switch and my uh, PS5 slash PS4 Xbox One. Uh, but to be honest, uh, uh, my channel, I, I wanted to be focused more on discussions and um, conversations. So that's why I focus it more on reviews, thinking about, or that's my way of say reflections. And now currently I'm working on Digimon Seekers, uh, a summary and analysis of the, of the story of Digimon Seekers. 
Um, if I do make another video about video games or specifically uh, about a game that I bought, it will, probably, it will probably be on Infinite Space or Catherine if I do pick them up just to explain why I decided to pick them up, um, what pushed me to pull the trigger and so forth, right? Um, so yeah, so that's what I currently uh, have. When I, excuse me, that's what I currently picked up for my previous older consoles, uh, previous older handhelds as well, my PS3. And even though they're DS games, obviously I'm going to play these DS games on my 3DS slash 2DS. So thank you so much for listening and watching. I do appreciate it. Let me know if you guys have picked up any recent games. Are you guys done picking up for previous generations the same way that I'm done for my PS3? And my DS, if you are, please let me know what were your last pickups were for those consoles, for that handheld. And again, thank you for watching and listening. I do appreciate it. Take care, everyone. Have a great day.